So we are back and we are talking about what makes a perfect professional wrestling show since Pina Galleries was more so of the storylines and the production aspect. I'll talk about it a little bit because it is important. I want to talk about the physical. And we're going to start off almost immediately. And a lot of people don't think this, but I think it's very important. And that's the logo. Logo is the first exposure to a new show. I give Rampage as an example because Rampage looks neat. It's that throwback that people like to look at. It's very high energy. And also the whole thing about the background and all of that, that's also very important. And also it can stand alone. Mm -hmm. And I do think that a because you know when you get into Rampage, you want to feel the energy because that's what wrestling is. Wrestling is an energizing show of competition. <clears throat> With the NFL, it's almost the same sort of principle. It's it's recognizable, but there's you know different patterns and components of it that really make it stand out. And every logo within the NFL is very scientifically and strategically made. So you not only instantly recognize it, but you're like, I want to watch some football. Same thing here. Rampage's logo is instantly recognizable, gets people back to that day. Right. But then also, it's still fresh. And then it's like, I want to watch some Rampage. That's kind of what that does. The next thing you want to do is set. Set is important. I'm going to give this one as an example because I actually like the set of the new NXT. The, there is the lighting work that does help drastically with the overall presentation of the show. Mm -hmm. So you wanna give ambient lighting to the background because then people will not look at the fans more so while a match is happening, they're looking at the match because look at the, look at the drastic contrast. Right. Your eye draws to the ring because the ring is the most well-lit thing other than the entranceway. Entranceway is also important within this context because that's where a lot of the digital stuff is. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't as big and prevalent in the Attitude Era more so, um, other than maybe some, like WrestleMania always had to be big. Mm -hmm. you, can, you cannot have a small WrestleMania stage. It always had to be big and elaborate because that's WrestleMania. NXTs, I like NXTs now. I actually think this one, I like this one more than the um, old NXT stuff other than maybe the logo and the color scheme. I probably would have changed that, but that's just me. It's still the same sort of principle for Raw, for Dynamite, for SmackDown, for um, Impact. All of it is the same exact thing. Ambiance lighting, catchy entrance way, ring is the most lit thing because that's what you want people to focus on when something is happening in the ring. Right. Let's go to where production comes in. Obviously, AEW and WWE have the necessary funds to produce top of the line amazing products right but let's talk about some of the smaller uh companies that may not have that kind of budget and i want to do impact wrestling as an example of this no matter where they go they will work with what they can to at least give a good valued show and this is not just for like the stuff on television. This is for GCW. This is for CZW. Things that may or may not have that perception. With Impact Wrestling, they're trying to give off a good product because it's still Impact Wrestling. They have a 15, 20 year reputation to withhold, but it's still indie. It's a super indie. Mm -hmm. But when you get to like your ECWs, it's going to be a little bit more grungy because that's what they wanted to do. It was gave that more of that, um, that bingo hall look right. that they were going it was It was intentional. And it was intentional because, number one, they didn't have the budget. But number two, that the entrance way was never the focus. It was the wrestling and the fans. And we'll talk about fans here in just like a little bit, actually. So... That's production. Production is important, and when you don't shoestring budget, you know, backstage segments and stuff really fill up impact, which is good because then you don't have to do as much on live. With Raw, and I wanted to talk about timing when it comes to when you want to start your show. When you are a professional wrestling show that runs weekly, and you're thinking of your demographic, you're thinking about... Two big things when it comes to when the show happens. 
what time of day it is and what day. Mm -hmm. So Monday Night Raw is on Mondays. Why? Because statistics say that when people start at the beginning of the week, Mondays are always the worst days. You want to come home, you want to relax with a drink and watch something because nothing happens on Monday. It's right. not like Friday. Right. And Friday is the worst fucking day to do a show. One of them right now. It used to be good, but now it's not. Same thing with like Thursdays. Thursdays is kind of weird because it's like good and bad depending on what it is. Also, you don't want to do a Monday Night Raw at noon. Right. People are at work yeah. for most of the time. So what, they, what the strategy here was when they did Raw, because since they are an East Coast-based company, they start at like 8. So this is their mindset, and this is what mindset is for a lot of these companies that, you know, when it's international distribution, that's going to be a totally different story. But they're based in the East. They're based in New York. You come home at five, you have dinner with your family at six, you have some time to get yourself settled and antiquated, and then the show starts. Right. That's all done on purpose because that's when the most people do that. That's when the most people watch television. Mm -hmm. You sit down, your kids are taken care of, you have dinner, you got everything done, errands are done, you're home, that's when the show starts. Right. And it will be different where it is. Now, obviously, we're in Vegas. Monday Night Raw starts at like four, five, five, four. But it's still kind of that same principle, just it's a different time zone. But that's based in New York. If WWE was based in Los Angeles, it would be at a different time zone. Maybe. I think it would. Because they're thinking about, they were thinking about that core demographic when they were watching when they were first being syndicated on television, it wasn't as, it wasn't as easy to get across right. the country 30 years ago as it is now. Because but they would still, they still start at the same time so they get the maximum exposure. Exactly. But what about a show like Rampage which starts later? Because they don't want to compete with another show. Well, right, but now Rampage is going to have a different demographic because the show starts later, which mm -hmm. is why it's a little more grungy than maybe right. like Dynamite. And, and, that, and that's the other thing, too. There are some people who will be out later, and then, you know, those rebellious people might watch it later, or they'll get up later. Well, let's put it this way. Families are probably not going to watch Dino, uh, watch. Um, they're not going to watch Rampage. The, Rampage is the same frequency that maybe they watch Raw. Right. They're going to go to bed or they're going to have some family time. They're not going to watch Rampage. That's not what Rampage is supposed to be. They're going after the demographic of the younger single audience. And that's also important to think of too. Single people. WWE is family centric. So they're going to have brighter colors. Mm -hmm. They're going to have goofier characters. They're going to have that because it entertains kids. Because guess what? When kids are happy, when the kids want to go to a Raw, guess who's paying for that? They ain't paying for it. Right. But those parents want them to be happy. Mm -hmm. With AEW, they're going after those hardcore fans who will stay up later, who will are very passionate about the product. Mm -hmm. So no matter what time they're going to fucking go, they're going to pack that house. Right. Except for maybe during the day because they have obviously work or they sleep, you know, later and they stay up later. Mm -hmm. well, that's just that demographic. And we, t we really did brush upon this, but SmackDown is weird because it hops. It was on Thursday and then it went to Friday. And then it was Thursday and Friday. And this is an example of when demographics change. When it was on Thursday, that was Attitude Era. So you, it was on later. And it was on a Thursday when the demographic was not, they, they were not going out and partying. They weren't right. going to the bars and having a good time. But now, since this here is focused on that family thing, you really think parents are going out on a Friday most of the time? I'm not saying all the time, I'm saying most of the time. Right. They're going to stay with their families or they're going to do family things on right. that day because sometimes they have a half day because guess what those parents are going to have a different job right a job that may have them get out earlier and this is statistically proven so they'll have that family time they're going to come home do you really think they want to go out then no right. 
If I'm doing something during the day, I come home at 5. And that might be part of the reason why Rampage isn't doing very well right now, too, is because their demographic is not sitting at home watching television. Right. They need, they need to bump this show to a different day. Right. Honestly, I feel like Rampage should have been on Monday for that reason. Mm -hmm. Because on Monday, that's the first day of the week. You know? Mm -hmm. It's not that Friday when, you know, the kids like us, when we go out. Now, he and I, we don't go out too much. I mean, no, we do. We, we go to Wings. Yep. And that's that thing. At the end of the week, I, I don't want to stay at fucking at home. I want to go out. I want right. to get a drink. I want to meet some babes, you know? That's what I want to do. So, from that point, let's talk about when you're looking at the show, how many matches, what kinds of matches, and the variety of matches for people to stay interested. Because people watch wrestling for different reasons. You always want to start off with a match that gets the audience engaged enough to want to continue watching. Exactly. Or you want to get, you want to always start with either a match or a segment with a main eventer. Right. Um, or a or a segment that for a storyline that has multiple parts to it. So like, when you start the show, a longer a longer form segment works better in hour one than it does in hour three, which right. we'll talk about here actually in a bit. Um, because actually the length of time for a show is important. So before we even get into it, two hours. That is golden rule for wrestling. Pay-per-views can go up to three hours. Yes, yes. Um, four no, hours. No more, no more than four hours, yep. I would say. But a show can only be two hours. Yep, a show can only be two hours. Because that when you do... the attention span of someone who's watching a show. Exactly. And for the amount of segments, between six and eight segments max. They should never exceed that. This right. does not include backstage segments because backstage segments are generally going to be shorter. Right. You have to entertain the audience that's there. Mm -hmm. So backstage segments range from so, so, two, two to five minutes, and then the matches have plenty of time to exceed a certain time. When you do your first match, you want to think about the future. You don't want to start with the main eventers. You no. want to start like with this guy. Right. This guy, the next star, because the, this will be that. that young, and also, like you said, it's the younger talent. They're going to have a different style than your main eventers. Right. But they're going to be faster also, paced. Right. They're going to be a little more energetic. You want you want people to start off excited. Right. And that's the biggest audience. So they, the they, they, see, they see a guy like this. It's like, ooh, this guy is the future of this company too. So it's a perfect right. time to have a younger star or a rookie out there at this time. For the most part. Right. Because they're not in it for the they're not in it for the segment. They're not in it for the talking. They're in it for the match. Right. So let's talk about gender specific rivalries or gender specific like divisions. Right. So you'll have your women's division and your men's division. Um. Obviously, that might change up here in a little bit in the next 20, 30 years. But for right now, for every if your company has more men on its roster. It's two men's matches per one's women's match. But if it's more women-centric, it's the opposite. Two women's divisions matches, two one man's matches. Mm -hmm. You don't see a lot of that, but there are companies like that. But, you know, with, because number one, you will have more men to the roster. Right. And roster sizes, if you are more focused on a man-centric thing, you should have no less than 30 men on your roster. And if you have women, a women's division, great. No less than 10. Mm. And titles, one main tag team, secondary, women's. Mm -hmm. That's it. You don't need any more. Mm -hmm. With WWE, they can pull off multiple women's championships and tags because they have a huge women's roster. Right. And I think AEW should have that because they have a huge women's roster. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, depending on how popular they are, a women's thing can be the main event, and that does not change that formula right. to men's segments or matches to one women's segment or match. Right. Obviously, with like a Becky Lynch, you're going to have more of a higher priority main eventer here because Becky Lynch is a main eventer. Mm -hmm. With tag teams, you got to have a tag team match in there somewhere, either regular tag Six, eight, once you get to 10, it starts to get a little crazy, depending on what it is. 10 person should be saved for special events 
only. Mm -hmm. And sometimes starting with a tag team match is good because usually they're faster paced matches. Right. And that was another big thing. When you do not have a tag team match within a specific show, it doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And we've seen it. It's like, oh, there are just a bunch of singles matches, triple threat matches, and whatever. No, you got to have this formula. You mm -hmm. got to have a tag team formula match sometime. It can even include women. That's right. fine. And I have all men singles. That's fine. But it, there has to be at least a tag team match somewhere within a card. Right. Every, every single night. So all of these combinations of things, the appearance, the match structures, how it's oriented, that's another really important thing. Right. But there's one component that will, if everything else is done right from yours to mine, there's one other thing that not only can a company can, but it cannot control. And that is the fans. Mm -hmm. When you see this, this thing, Packed house, a bunch of science people, really excited. Guess what you're thinking of when it's when you are at home? I want to go to this. Right. I want to go to this. Why? Because I want to feel that energy. I want to watch that match right there. Right. And I want to be a part of that action. But when <sighs> this is so boring, when the crowd looks like they're bored, yeah. Who wants to go to that? Right. But guess what? Every company can and cannot control that this. Right. If they put on the best show possible with the best kind of talent and a good production value and you get your money's worth, you get this. Right. But when you get boring storylines, boring matches, a too many talking segments, and too you're many backstage segments, you're gonna get what WWE has now. Right. A bunch of bored people, sleeping for three fucking hours. Nobody right. wants that. I would rather watch a three-hour show when it's this than when it's boring any day of the week. Right. You can change nothing about everything that we both discussed. But if the crowd is doing this, it's going to be a much better product. Change nothing else. If this is happening, it's going to be a much better show. Yeah, do you, do you remember when uh, when uh, the uh, WWE used to have their entire arena filled? They only had a small section cordoned off for yeah for the um, and now they have the now they drape off like a huge area because yeah. number one that they don't they can't sell it anymore. Right, it was and, packed. And it's yeah, and it's like it's become overproduced at that point because you know that there's no one behind that camera. Right. You know that there's no one in that section. It was packed to the brim. I mean, and then also the signs. You know, right. signs are super cool. This is cool. I want right. to see more signs, but they can't because fucking uncreative people and they're bored. Right. It's like, oh, WWE's coming into town. When am I ever going to do this? All right, I'll get tickets. It's only 10 bucks, whatever. Right. I don't want... I don't want to go to a show like that. I don't want that mindset right. ever. It's, it's kind of it's kind of like the burden of going, and I think that most I think that a lot of parents go because they the kids beg them. Right, the kids are more excited than the parents, but I'm right. sorry, the parents are going to be the ones that give the most energy. Right, and the kids are going to reciprocate that energy. It's just going to happen. The, uh, the uh, younger audience, even that doesn't have kids, they're not kids, but they're young single young adults, if you put on a compelling product that also appeals to them, you're going to have a more excited crowd. Right. I went to Monday Night Raw. It was a really great show. I recommend watching it next week. And guess what? The people who are sitting here, guess what they fucking did next week? It didn't matter what it was. They watched the show. Right. Because guess what? I, we went to SummerSlam, and what did we not see a lot of? We did. We saw a lot of families with kids, but yep. we did not see a lot of, um, we didn't see a lot of uh, single adults. Right. We didn't. We didn't. Not at all. It, but it, then you contrast that with an AEW show, and oh my god, we were talking to everybody because everyone was just there. And, and, and they were excited to right. be there. Now, with SummerSlam, I'll be honest with you, when SummerSlam said that they were coming to Vegas and they were going to Allegiant, I was more excited to see Allegiant right. than I was for SummerSlam. I could have gone to anything right. in that stadium, but I went to wrestling because number one. It's been a long-ass time since I've been to a WWE event because of COVID, but also... You know, I wanted to see Allegiant. It was right. a brand new stadium, and it was cool. That was really it. Yeah. And I don't want to go to a show like that. We we didn't even live here when we went to Double or Nothing. I mean, I I I 
I am more excited to go to an Impact Wrestling event than I am to go to a WWE event. You know why? Because the different crowd. Right. Tickets are going to... The only the only time that the crowd ever involved a lot of families and kids was a show on Saturday night because that was the time that all the families were going to a live show. Exactly. That's what just happens. But right. you go on a Friday night, you go on a Sunday night, and it's not going to be a lot of families with kids. Exactly. E- exactly. 100%. Uh, but, you know, they had to do that because of, I think, a UFC fight was going to happen on that Sunday, and they didn't want to compete with that. But but the, the point the point is is that— Oh, also, also, the size of the crowd does not matter. It doesn't matter. You could see this of a bunch of people sitting on their hands and booing. I don't want to go to that. I don't care how many people are there. Right. What I want to see, I want to see this, a bunch of people. I would rather go to a, a local show that yeah. has 50 very passionate, hardcore fans and feel that energy and reciprocate that. Right, because I felt the energy in that stadium. And it, there were there were certain matches that killed the entire yep. momentum of the and show. And it, it, I mean, I was like, oh my God. I'm like, oh my God, I almost want to take a nap. I'm bored. Right. And you don't want to do that with a wrestling show. You right. don't. In our section, they were doing a bunch of different things and they were getting themselves popping and having fun other than a bunch of... Just bored people. Oh, I know. And that's the worst thing you want. You and don't. They, and there are some sections that did try yep. to, uh, to to uh, to get themselves entertained because WWE was not doing it. Right. But you know that's here nor there. It's the most important thing. It's something that they can and cannot control. Um, that is my part of it. Peanut Gallery, do you have anything else to add regarding nope. what I said? Well, okay. What are we doing next week? Next week we have a double pay per viewer. We are not only going to be covering Extreme Rules, but we are also going to be covering CMLL's 88th anniversary show. Oh yeah, we get that coming back. So if you did enjoy this video, remember to like it, subscribe wherever you're listening or watching this on. Become a patron. There will be a link down below in the link tree. And as always, be majestic.